In mass spectroscopy, sometimes uh, the structure of the different species, the radicals and cations, get, it gets sort of oversimplified in textbooks. So, for example, here is a nice simple molecule, isopropanol. And in a textbook, an introductory textbook, they might just say, okay, well, in the mass spectrometer, we're going to lose an electron from this molecule. And what does the resulting ion, the parent ion, look like? Well, the parent ion is going to be a cation because it lost an electron, and it's going to be a radical. And books are kind of vague about this. They'll just say, oh, okay, somewhere within this structure, there is a missing electron, so it has a positive charge, and it's a radical. And as an organic chemist, that's not very satisfactory because I, I want to know, where is that electron? Is it on the carbon? Is it on a hydrogen? Where is that missing electron? So let's be more specific about this. When you look at molecules, molecules, at least in my mind, tend to have different regions for electron density. So um, we're going to have uh, sigma bonding electrons, and there are going to be certain orbitals associated with that. And there are pi bonds. And then there are the... Uh, non-bonding electrons. These are electrons that are only held by, uh, uh, next to one nucleus, so they're a little higher in energy. And then next we have uh, the anti-bonding electrons and we have sigma stars. Um, and so let's give them some orbitals here. So when, when we fill our electrons in our molecule, we fill the lowest energy uh, orbitals first. And so we put electrons down here and the sigma bonds, that's great. And pi bonds, we have electrons there. And then if we have a, an atom with a lone pair, and these are our lone pairs, we're going to have electrons there too. And you know, we might have more or less. I put too many electrons there, but you get the idea. And then typically we don't have any electrons up in these orbitals. So the highest energy electrons, and let's be clear, this is on an energy axis. I'm trying to show these. These are low energy, and these are high energy. So when in the mass spectrometer, when you pull out an electron, you're going to pull out the highest energy electron possible. That's going to be the easiest one to remove. So where do we remove electrons from in the mass spectrometer? Typically from the lone pairs. So when we represent our, our parent ion, we don't have to just say, oh, somewhere we've lost an electron. We can be very specific about where that electron likely came from. So let's draw our molecule again, isopropanol. And now we're going to lose an electron. And where does that electron come from? It's going to come from a lone pair. So we'll pull an electron off of one of those oxygen lone pairs. And if our molecule had multiple atoms with lone pairs, there are multiple different places we could have pulled an electron. We'll only pull out one electron. Since we lost an electron on oxygen, this now has a positive charge. So here we have a much more exact picture of what our radical cation looks like. It looks like this structure here. It's just not, there's not an electron missing somewhere. It's specifically likely on that oxygen. Why is this important? We're going to draw mechanisms of how these molecules fragment. And when we draw a mechanism, we need to know precisely where those electrons are or are not. And as it turns out, since the radical is on oxygen, since it's on oxygen, that's where the mechanism is going to start, and that's going to become the weak point in the molecule, so our fragmentation is occur, going to occur around that radical. So it's important to understand, where is the electron missing? It's just not some general picture, as we see in the top middle, of uh, somewhere there's an electron missing, not sure where. No, it's, it's very likely in a specific place, and uh, we've narrowed it down to this oxygen. Uh, wherever your lone pair is. So it's an important distinction to make.